there and welcome to Startup Central. I'm Nanta Rai. This is the only show of its kind on Indian television dedicated, of course, to startups, innovation, technology, disruption, entrepreneurship. In a nutshell, basically, if it falls under the gambit of the new economy, it's going to be here on ET Now at 6 p.m. every weekday. Ladies and gentlemen, like all the stakeholders of the community that we get on this show, the team that puts the show together, the Startup Central team, thrives on constructive criticism. We want to hear from you on how to improve this show to take it to the next level. What we need to add, subtract, mix things up. If you don't tell us, who's going to tell us? We love getting your emails. Our email address right on top, suc at etnow.tv. Now, when we talk about startups, the biggest story that's going to perhaps play out for the weeks and months to come and something we've been talking about a lot right here on the channel is of our entrepreneurs and startups unicorns coming of age dreaming big and heading for ipos yes first they, many of them were looking at foreign listing but we haven't seen the rules for the direct overseas listing just as yet so now they're all getting ready to make their debut on the lal street now is the lal street ready to start valuing loss-making startups? Does the Lal Street even have a know which all lens it needs to go through to figure out how to value these startups? Which ones, and you're gonna have seen so many of them. So is this space is gonna get overcrowded. You're talking about big bucks here. You've got Paytm attempting the country's largest IPO, looking at about two and a half to three billion dollars. Zomato has already filed the draft red herring prospectus for uh, about a $1.1 billion IPO. Next up, we're expecting many more to file with the market regulator SEBI. For example, Nika, Delivery. You've also got P Policy Bazaar, which is an IPO in the works. Flipkart is expected to list overseas. I'm going to be discussing this and more with my guests who are joining us uh, live right here on uh, this edition of Startup Central. We've got uh, Nimesh Kampani, the president of uh, Let's Venture Plus. I'm also being joined by Gautam, who is uh, the director at uh, Bernstein India. Incidentally, he wrote a report just last week on uh, PTM. So I thought he's the best guy to get over here to talk about the kind of appetite that we're also seeing for fintech. Welcome to Startup Central. Thanks a lot, gentlemen, for giving us your time for this uh, live broadcast. Uh, Nimesh, I'll come to you first. Um, these are all loss-making companies. I know everybody still talks very famously about the Amazon model. 1997 made its debut, didn't report a profit for 10 years. But in India, this is going to be the first Amazon-like situation we're going to see. Um, I'm sure the appetite certainly exists. Uh, but do we have the expertise as yet to figure out how to evaluate these IPOs? Thanks, thanks, Nayantara, for having me on the show. And I think, uh, I think yes, Amazon is the poster boy. I think they uh, uh, clearly it was set out uh, on what their strategy is, what they are looking at doing. And if I were to look at, typically in any traditional IPO or traditional markets, I think earnings is the main driver, and earnings growth is what every investor looks at. I think that. Uh, that will shift now more towards investments and acquisition of customers, right? And with all the new age companies coming in, I think, uh, uh, you know, either the investor will want fast exponential growth or profit equity, right? And when I look at fast exponential growth, I think the way to look at it is that it can be, uh, you know, fourfold, right? I can look at uh, what is the rate of increase of users. It has to be exponential for me to give it a value. Uh, is the, what is the strategy of the company, right? I think it will go beyond a one-year analysis into numbers and you know how the next step profit will looks. It will go into what is the investment strategy of the company, uh, where are they investing in new categories they are adding, what are the new products they are adding, you know how they are getting deeper into the customer life cycle, and of course acquisitions come into play, right? And so I think this all boils down to one key thing, and I think that is one thing that we need to understand on how a startup. Uh, strategy or psychology works, right? I think the first objective that a startup has, even when the startup is to get users, right? I think get more and more users, so that's why we want to see the exponential growth rate in users. And then once you have a good scale of users, the next comes in, you know, how do you make them use your offering, products, services, app, continuously and repetitively, right? So I think that is the next parameter that comes in. 
And finally, the strategy on monetization. So I think this is something that will have to be looked at by every investor who is looking at investing uh, in the new age technology companies. Gautam, so uh, let, let me get to you in now. Uh, you wrote that report on uh, PTM, rather its parent company, 197 Communications as well. And you made a case about how PTM is going to continue to be the largest uh, uh, fintech ecosystem in the country, with its edge being how it actually integrates all of its services and products and therefore reduces its cost. You also made a case about how PTM is actually going to break even in 12 to 18 months. Um, so all those who are looking at PTM, is that what they're going to be looking at? That how maybe it's going to stay the number one and it's looking like it's going to trim the fat even further? So, you know, there's definitely an adjustment that Indian investors will have to make because there have been absolutely no tech companies listed in India. Uh, so there's definitely, I mean, I think Indian investors are used to looking at profit-making companies, uh, looking at EBITDAs and profit uh, after tax, uh, and that's definitely going to change. But I don't think any sensible investor will invest in any company unless a company lays out very clearly, uh, one, uh, the long-term sustainable unit economics, uh, the fact that this business is sustainable long-term, uh, and this is not a race to the bottom. Uh, and second is uh, the fact that a path, uh, a path to finally break even and sort of uh, revenue monetization and, and a path to profitability. Uh, so I don't think any company is going to hit the street without this roadmap, uh, whether it is Paytm or any other uh, tech player. Uh, coming to Paytm, uh, I definitely think that uh, the fact that there are other non-payment... So first, I think not many appreciate that the revenue monetization of Paytm is best relative to any other payments player. Uh, so a lot of narrative has been driven by UPI and UPI has dominated all conversations. Uh, but the monetization of and, but payments is a far broader business than payment than UPI. It has merchant payment, it has online payments, uh, it has a lot of wallet integrations, uh, and this significant kind of merchant ecosystem where Paytm is invested. So first, first I think that needs to be appreciated. I think the second part is what Paytm is doing on the non-payment side and what's the kind of early revenue traction that Paytm is seeing that. Uh, and as you start extrapolating that, uh, you start to see a part to break in, which is the case we've made uh, in, in, in the report. Uh, so I think that's that's what I would say. Okay. So uh, let me come back to you, Nimesh. You know, you've talked about the various lens that you need to look at. But another way I want to ask you is that this is going to be the first time that the Lal Street is going to be really seriously looking at large companies that are loss making. India so far, if it has wanted to, Indian investors have wanted to be a part of these new age companies. They are there have been very limited options, right? You've had to go through companies like what? Like an InfoEdge India, which further invests in Zomato, or you have a Just Style, et cetera. Is there any concern that we suddenly could have so many IPOs? Do we have such a big uh, appetite? Is there enough, uh, uh, you know, liquidity? I'm sure liquidity is there, but is there enough appetite for just looking at the size of these IPOs? You've got Paytm and uh, Zomato, just the two of them together, you're talking about over $4 billion. So, so Nayantar, I think there, I think appetite is there. I think if you look at the market, right, uh, most of the companies that we are talking about or are looking at raising funds, and in fact, some of the companies that are also becoming unicorns, if you talk to any of the founders, you know, they have demand which far outstrips the supply today. Right? So I think there is huge global liquidity which is driving this. Uh, and I think on your show last week also, we but that I think... Uh, the amount of liquidity that is coming into the Indian markets is huge, and especially in the new age technology. I think if you were to follow the markets, a lot of public market investors in India uh, have uh, started investing in these startups at an early stage itself. And some of them have become unicorn, you know, thanks to the investments checks written by many of these guys. Uh, secondly, I think a lot of domestic funds have now started raising funding funds uh, for this kind of initiative, and we have seen enough of those coming out of the biggest of uh, houses that we have here. 
So yes, I think there is a lot of appetite. I think and the understanding of the investor in India and the understanding of markets is is phenomenal, right? I think uh, uh, the, the the adaptability to this change, I think, will be much faster than the adaptability to digital that we have seen as consumers. Right? I think to value these new companies, to evaluate them, to access them, uh, I think that is what you will see now as we go ahead. But but definitely there is huge appetite, both domestic and international. Okay, so let me take that. Let me build on that point a little bit. And Gautam, I'm going to ask you to come in on that one, which is that uh, you know it's very famously it was very famously said by Harvard Business Review, right, uh, that it was Amazon who taught the investors how to behave. So in India, do you think it's going to be PTM that's going to be teaching the investors how to behave? Don't forget, Zomato's already filed the draft red herring prospectus. You got others that are also in queue, much smaller ones, maybe like car trades, etc. So do you think it's going to be in India like one of these unicorns which is going to teach investors on how to approach these new age companies or each one will have a role to play? Yeah, like I said, right, unless they lay out a long term roadmap to profitability, uh, they continue to demonstrate user acquisition growth. Uh, so, there are, you know, investors don't just look at one thing. Uh, investors look at a sort of a broad array of things. Uh, it's user acquisition, it's uh, investment in new businesses, competitiveness of existing businesses, and, and sort of long-term monetization and revenue growth. So I think if any of these startups uh, make that case, which I think PTM, which is what we have highlighted in the report as well, I think PTM is looking to do that. Uh, it feels it's at a stage where it can start to show a very strong monetization case, uh, rather than just simply vanity metrics around market share or just simply looking at user growth, which works really well in the private market, and Nimesh would know that. Uh, but when it comes to public markets, you need to show revenue monetization. So I think so long as the monetization path is clear, uh, investors will likely are more likely to believe in the long-term profitability and the break-even economics. Uh, if the monetization is weak, uh, I think uh, just showing user growth, which works in the private market, won't work in the public market. That's my view. Okay, and Animesh, the kind of patience that's going to be needed for that to happen, okay, you'll have to keep showing a better unit economics, you're going to show how new, there will be new revenue streams and how you will have a competitive edge. I take all of that. But the patience that is also needed, it took Amazon 10 years before it delivered a profit. I completely agree with you, Nandra. I think patience is huge and the other thing that I think will be big will be learning, right? And as we said, if you're talking about unit economics, I think... Uh, uh, Gautam and his friends will have to teach one of these investors on looking at parameters like, you know, customer acquisition cost, long-term value of the customer, lifetime value of the customer, return on ad spends. So I think that that's the that, that's, a, that's a happy part that we need to relearn finance of the way we have looked at in the past. Uh, but yes, patience is the key, I think, you know. Uh, investors will have to stick to their uh, philosophy on, you know, what the founders are doing. I think what the way they are strategizing is, that's where I said. Uh, you'll either follow uh, path to high growth or you'll follow path to profit. So that's what. Uh, although I would, uh, sorry, sorry to come in, but uh, although I would argue that uh, the patience that potentially, you know, I think the 1997 uh, Amazon example is a bit of an overstated example. Uh, I think it worked very well in the early stages of the startup. I don't think investors are ready for a five year or a six, you know, anything more than probably it's a 12 to 18 month, 24 month kind of a, a, a patience required. I don't think we're talking about patients of, of that order that uh, investors long term. I think many of these startups have been in existence for more than a decade. I think Paytm has been in existence for more than a decade. So investors do expect a lot more from, from mature startups than they would. Uh, one must recognize that Amazon actually got listed at a very early stage in that business. So if you've listed at a very early stage in business, then people are more patient. But if you're invested, listed at a sort of a fairly late, later stage in business, uh, then I don't think the patience would be probably as, as high. So just to put it differently, I think when you become a unicorn, it's it's more like, you know, the lunch session, the post-lunch session of the first day of a test match. You know, you have a long match to go. Uh, the IPO event is the second day, right? So you still have a long journey to go. Uh, you, you It completely changes your game. You are working on a very different ticket now. Uh, and that's where the importance on path to profitability and high growth comes in. So I think one of these two parts is what most of will have to choose. And I think as, as Gautam has said, you know, most of them will choose the path to profitability and try and show profitability sooner rather than later.
okay I'm glad to get all uh, kind of viewpoints over there and I think it's going to be very interesting to see how the entire uh, startup ecosystem also goes out of its way to uh, you know do an outreach not just with the analyst community which will have to change its lens but also the retail investors and with that point let me come to you Gautam um, uh, you know because you track fintech and you've got India's largest IPO being planned of two and a half to three billion dollars by PTM you will, you know, the way it is, unless the rules are changed and there's a smaller portion that is now going to be allocated to the retail investors, which we don't know and there's no such uh, confirmation from the market regulator, that's a lot of paper that's going to have to be lapped up by the retail investors. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, uh, in, in a way, it works really well for Paytm. Paytm is a consumer brand. Uh, it's a payments brand. It's fighting Google Pay and Phone Pay uh, in the market, which are all consumer brands. Uh, it's fighting like global tech in some ways. Uh, so an IPO would with retail investors participating in PTM. And in fact, you know, I would go back to uh, an IPO that happened last year or even a bit earlier than that, which was SBI cards. Uh, that was absolutely retail investors favorite. Uh, that was primarily because that was the only payments company that was getting listed in India. Now that was SBI, uh, in, be it a second largest uh, credit card player, but there was absolutely very strong interest, uh, retail interest in that name. So if a consumer brand like Paytm goes to the market, uh, again, I, I wouldn't comment on the on the retail interest, but I think it would work really well, well for Paytm to have some uh, of its users, also its shareholders. Okay, so that's the way you will also be looking at it. Now, you know, Nimesh, I want to build also on the point that you guys were raising. Amazon too early, too late. Let's just look at what happened very recently. Let's look what happened with DoorDash. We can see what's happened with Airbnb. You know, I think we all saw how Brian Chesky's face fell open when he found out the listing price, right? That photograph went viral. He was doing a live interview. Um, look at what happened with Coinbase, all of that. Now, in India, as these new age companies um, list do you think, you know, the pricing will have to be maybe far more attractive for investors than what they would have ideally wanted, just simply because, you know, they're going to be the first ones to be experimented with? So, so the first principle is here, and, and that would be that, you know, uh, it's a very different market. US is a very mature market as compared to India. And in terms of both, in terms of investor market and in terms of consumer market, so I think you cannot just apply the multiples that are there in the U.S. to Indian companies and say, hey, I should get the same valuation as the U.S. companies getting, because there are many other parameters that go into it on the way it is looked at. But having said that, I think, yes, uh, uh, I think the Indian markets have also matured enough in the last few years, and especially in the new age technology space, where, uh, you know, you will justifiably get a very fair valuation that you will be looking at. And that's how the company will look at it. And of course, now, with more and more research being done, right? That was something that was missing. A year back, uh, you know, there was nobody writing reports on the fintech space or the edtech space or, you know, a consumer B2C companies. But today, I think there is a lot of information available. And that, especially that helps in, you know, evaluating it in a much more appropriate manner. And I think that is what you will see. So you will see fair valuation. It's not that, you know, uh, you cannot say that India will get a discount to the U.S. It's not fair to compare it that way. Even if you look at traditional companies, right? Uh, the companies in U.S. would be trading at 30 times earnings multiple. The same best of the same companies in India would be trading at 13 to 15 times of earnings, right? So it's, it's not that, you know, you get an exact multiple here. But definitely uh, the market is mature enough to understand on how to value that those companies. Okay, now before I let you uh, both go, um, you know, there are going to be a lot more IPOs that are being planned. There's just a couple of the names that we have. Now, out of, uh, so Gautam, I'll let you have the final comments on this one, which is that, you know, if you've got, uh, and, and, you know, we can also see in the category, it's always the, it's the market leaders that are planning the IPOs, right? So if I can come to you, Gautam, with that, uh, will this uh, make it, uh, you know, as, as all of them understand the new rules, they have to learn also on their part that they have many more shareholders that they're going to become answerable to. They can't continue burning cash for acquiring customers. So therefore, are you going to see it become immediately an advantage for the startup that's not going in for the listing? For example, let me give an example. Um, if Zomato is going in, it's suddenly going to have to be far more uh, responsible with this cash, explain to shareholders, it may not be able to burn so easily. But Swiggy, 
won't uh, have that compulsion. So it can uh, burn more cash to increase customer, customer base, grow quickly, come out with all kind of innovative products. Similarly with Paytm, will it give an advantage to let's say a phone pay uh, to come out with uh, stuff that Paytm may no longer be able to? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's it, it has both sides, right? It's two sides to the story. I think one, you can raise a lot of capital, uh, even though you may you may have some secondary uh, sales in many of these tech IPOs. Uh, so it, one, it gives you access to capital. Uh, second, it gives you branding. Uh, you're also doing a national IPO, so it kind of gives you makes you associate more with the Indian public, regulators, all of that. So there are advantages to that. Uh, but on the flip side, obviously, if, you know, if someone is not under the microscope, uh, they can sort of I mean, but, you know, there's a limit to all these, you know, to, to any kind of financial uh, discipline, right? So, uh, I think it's good because it makes companies more financially disciplined. It's good for their business. Uh, eventually, all private companies will have to kind of grow into that. Uh, so, it's, it's the sooner you kind of take the reality and the reality hits you, the better it is for you. Uh, and I think in that sense, it's healthy for the Indian equity ecosystem because, you know, one of the criticisms of the uh, of the private equity markets and the venture capital markets in India has been there's been no, absolutely no exits. Uh, so to set the president uh, for an exit, uh, to set the president that, yes, the Indian private company can go public, uh, show financial discipline, show growth, uh, create value for public investors, that kind of uh, precedent uh, is very important for the startup ecosystem. So the startup ecosystem will also benefit from it uh, in that sense. With that, Gautam and Dimesh, I'd like to thank both of you for joining us on this edition of Startup Central. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Uh, you know, this is going to be the big story that's going to play out in 2021. Uh, Indian entrepreneurs, Indian startups uh, heading to the Lal Street, listing, coming of age. It's going to make the entire ecosystem, of course, uh, far more mature. So clearly, exciting times ahead. Uh, the retail investors also get to now be a part of this wealth creation exercise.